The Mobile County Public School System presents Home Room with Nancy Pierce. Hello and welcome to Home Room. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. A wonderful day is coming up for you and your children and it is fabulous, but this isn't the only day that you should and can go to the Sea Lab, the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. And joining me this morning to tell me about the Discovery Day is John Dindo. He is the Associate Director of the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. I always love it when you're here. We have Nancy, so much I, we fun. Do. Thank you for having me here. You're it's, welcome. It's always a pleasure to be here. I, I Thank you. I love Disco Well, I love the Sea Lab. I mean, what can you not love, right? I mean, it's... Well, I hope, I hope you do, you know. All the kids love it. Well, you know? <laughs> I don't want to grow up. So. <laughs> and you don't either. Uh, and I haven't. We Thank will you. forever be children. Yes, That's we right. will. So Discovery Lab, it's coming up. It's April 12th? April 12th. Uh -huh. It is. Uh -huh. yeah. What's so special about that day? Because well, the Sea Lab's special every day. It, it is. Um, that day is different because we open up our laboratories, which are normally closed to the public mm -hmm. because of the type of research that we do. And so we open up all of our laboratories and our scientists and graduate students are available to explain the type of research that each and every one of them is doing. <clears throat> and they have different activities for the adults and the children that emulate the types of work they do. In the fisheries lab, we'll have some fishing games and stuff, but as they describe the type of work that they're doing. Oh, that is really cool. It is. No wonder it's so much fun. What other kind of research is going on, or is that top secret? Well, oh, no, be. no, no, no. It, it's just that, you know, you can't have the public walking into sure. your labs and stuff. So we've, some of our studies involve tagging redfish. Mm -hmm. So we have these little acoustical tags that send out a beep, and we have these listening stations all over Mobile Bay. So we want to know how many of these redfish are passing our little listening stations and how often they're passing. So it gives us an idea of the patterns and movements. We have satellite tags on sharks offshore. So every time a shark comes up to the surface, gets within about 10 feet of the surface, the satellite beeps and we what? know exactly where that animal is. Oh my gosh. And that's just, that's just some of it. We, yeah. we have grass bed studies. We're looking at erosion around the bay, erosion in you know, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, and how one of our scientists is working towards altering that and, and helping to restabilize our beaches. What causes erosion? Well, there's a number of different things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in our area, the biggest impact at any one given time would be a hurricane. Oh. Hur you know, hurricanes and tropical storms sure. eat up a lot of the beach. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but on a daily basis, boat traffic, lots of boat traffic moving back and forth. So it's waves, waves and boats. And not just ships, but, you know, regular recreational boats mm -hmm. that passing through inlets because of their, their wave activity. And, you know, the more people that we get, the more boats we have, sure. the more wave activity we have. So, and there are ways of buffering that, and that's some of the work that our scientists are working on. And some of these are, are did you say graduate students or Oh, students? absolutely, absolutely. We have- What uh, a great way to oh, it, spend your part of your college. Oh, it, it is, we have 52 full-time graduate students at the Sea Lab, and they're all studying various aspects of marine science under the research scientists that are there. And so they're all, they all become involved in Discovery Day because it's a great opportunity for them to transform their research to all ages. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so it becomes a learning experience for them as well as uh, knowledge for the people that are there. So it's, it's, it's exciting. Now, what do you do that day? Uh, I roam around most of the time, <laughs> greeting people, welcome them, taking well, that, photographs. You have and, to have you know, somebody that does that. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do that. Tough yeah. job. Yeah. You know. That's really neat. After 35, 37 years there, I, I just, I walk around. Uh, I think that's good. I think you deserve <laughs> I do it. Too. You definitely deserve uh, it. I love it. Um, how, many, how many people did you have last year? Because I know you've done yeah. this several years. Yeah. Last year, we had 3,300 visitors and about the same number the the year before and and uh the weather was okay last year it wasn't bright and sunny mm -hmm. we're hoping for a really bright sunny day um on april 12th you that know? would be wonderful who knows but uh we'll make do with everything and there are other people that show up the coast guard is there and with one of their rescue boats so they can show people um what they have to do when they go out on a, on a sea rescue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um there's, there's other, uh, the Environmental Study Center will be there on a, displaying a lot, some of the, they bring down a lot of their avian fauna, so 
kids and, and adults can see that and it helps bring people to the Environmental Study Center and other environmental groups. So the whole parking lot will be filled. We have a solar company coming over to show solar panel and wind generation displays. Are, do you have any windmills over on Dolphin Island? We, <coughs> we do not, but the, Dol I, the Dolphin Island Sea Lab has incorporated solar power in uh, three of its buildings. So right now we're the largest public generator of solar energy in the state. The military is the biggest, but we're the, we're the second. How's it working? <coughs> it's working wonderful. Uh, our location, the, because of our location, because of the south facing roofs and the amount of daylight that we get all during the year, they are producing and saving the state and saving the Dolphin Island Sea Lab money. Oh, that's always good. Absolutely. Does it have to be sunny or can it be overcast? And because we, uh, our sun has been absent for several days this year. <laughs> I don't know you're where just, it is, yeah, but it's just been gone. Thinking, yeah, you're just thinking right now. Overall, if you if you look at the number of uh, sunny days on a year basis, mm -hmm. we're predominantly sunny and sunny for long periods of time because you know as we move into summer. We'll have sun from early in the mm -hmm. morning till you know eight thirty nine o'clock at night, but it does have to be sunny for the solar panels okay. to generate. You you have you have to have that. So thinking about windmills. Um, actually, we have been thinking about them. Uh, solar is far more efficient than wind windmills. I would like to put a windmill in as a demo project. One of the things we have at when everybody comes down, we have our outside ray tank. So there are nine big huge cow nose rays in there mm -hmm. and if you stick your hand in the water the water's warm it's 72 to 74 degrees and we do that by using geothermal energy we have nine wells that are 190 feet deep so that's another method of alternative energy we're using the energy of the earth mm -hmm. to keep that water tank warm all year long i know people that use that at their house the absolutely geothermal. And, Absolutely. Uh, they think that in the long run that it will really pay off, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really neat. So that's another thing you can see. Actually, we have a display at the uh -huh. ray tank that talks about geothermal. So if I stick my hand in there, it's one of the rays isn't going to come oh, up and grab hold not. of me? Absolutely not. Really? And there are two sharks in there, too, and they, they're not going to come after you either. Okay. Promise. I'll I let promise. you put your hand in there. We do all the time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you'll love it. So, um... What else can the kids do? It starts at 10 o'clock. Starts at 10, 10 o'clock, okay. 10, 10 to 2. Do they have a certain way they have to go through? There, the, the estuarium, free admission to the kids. Okay. Uh, the adults will, will pay a fee, uh, free admission to the kids. And that's just the estuarium. Everything else at the lab, all the research, that's all open. All of these other activities are all open. They're outside, under tents, and, and things like that. So. It's a full, it's full a day. full day for yeah. them. There's lots of things to them for them to do. We need to take a break, so you Absolutely. sit tight, and we will be back. And we'll be back with you. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. I went to Murphy High School. In fact, to this day, my blood bleeds blue and gold. <laughs> to this day, some of my best friends are the high school football buddies that I had. Uh, we really had a wide array of classes available to us. All of my future relates back to the foundations that were given to me by the wonderful teachers and principals that I had uh, when I was a kid. I saw Mr. Tillman's class. Just that quick little five minutes I had with him made me think that I really wanted to uh, use small engines. I just love tinkering with them. Just a uh, gearhead. Graduating from the Career Tech Center has allowed me to better myself, make more money, be more informed about uh, the trade that I'm going to be in. I just felt like doing a trade is just better than working in an office or something. I have to be outside working with my hand or something. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. And welcome back to Homeroom. So glad to have you back with us. 
Uh, Dr. John Dindo from the Dauphin Island Sea Lab is here. and We're so glad to have him. He's talking about Discovery Day, which is so wonderful for families, for couples. If, even if you don't have children, it's great. Absolutely. Do you Absolutely. have people that return every year? We do, we do. And, and this year is kind of interesting because the town of Dolphin Island has an, an, art, uh, an art theme going on that weekend. Okay. Um, Alabama Power has these runners in which the last leg of their running event will be on Dolphin Island at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. Oh my. So all of that's combined with our uh, the open house and discovery day, which is, which even makes it bigger oh, and, sure. and much more fun. Oh, so, a lot, a lo so much to do. There is. You start at 10, when do you close your doors? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Two o'clock, yep. And, so, um, and, you have to, and you said it's full day. It's full day, and there's lots of, and there's so much to do. Um, the Estuarium is just a, a, a wonderful place to learn about Mobile Bay and what lives in Mobile Bay. Because our waters are brown, people often do not understand one why the water is brown. Yeah, you, and, and you what think could possibly dirty. Yeah, and what could possibly live in that uh -huh. in that water? And so the estuarium, that's its whole focal point is to show people what lives in the Tensaw Delta, which is to the north mm -hmm, where all of mm -hmm. forest is and brown water. What lives in the middle of Mobile, like underneath Mobile uh, Middle Bay Light, and then what lives along our shoreline and in, in offshore. In, so what the lives there? Everything. A really? Plethora, a plethora of animals wow. and plants live there. Uh -huh. It's just, it's just a, it's it's teeming with life, and because it's a because it's fed by all of these rivers, it's a nursery ground for all kinds of organisms. Everything comes into the bay to survive, to live, to right. grow, to be an adult. And, that, and that's what makes it such a unique habitat. It's wonderful. But you really can't tell by, by you know, just looking at the water, it is so brown. Absolutely. Wouldn't want to swim in it, wouldn't want to drink water from it. I guess you wouldn't take a glass of water and drink. No one I, drinks, yeah, yeah, salt water. Yeah, who but, knows what you might but, be drinking, a little snail yeah, or something. But, but that's the whole key. Everybody looks at Destin and, and to the sure. east as oh, beautiful, gosh, clear, wonderful yeah. water. And it is beautiful, clear, and wonderful uh -huh. water but is devoid of the type of life that we have. What feeds the fisheries, if you enjoy any seafood product, any seafood product, it's because of systems like the Mobile Bay River System and the Mississippi River System feeding the Gulf of Mexico that we have this abundance of seafood to eat. That, that, that's the whole basis of the, these nutrients that come down out of the system. So without that, we wouldn't have shrimp. We that's wouldn't have correct. That's oh my correct. goodness! Well, I'm very glad yeah. that 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 happens then. Absolutely, I think everybody is. And those and those are some of the things that are explained by our graduate students mm -hmm. and our faculty during this Discovery Day, and it's on display every day in the estuarium. If you come down and and go through each of the exhibits and, and look at that. What does the word estuarium mean? It's a Latin derivation of estuary. Okay. And estuary is what Mobile Bay is, and. Specifically, Mobile Bay is called a drowned river valley estuary. A drowned a river? A drowned river valley estuary, which means in geologic time, parts of it were above, above land, but as glaciers melted, you can imagine that basin filled mm -hmm, with water. Mm -hmm. But so is the Amazon. The mm -hmm. Amazon, the largest river in the world, is exactly the same thing, a drowned river valley estuary. I've so, never heard of that. Yeah. So drowned it's a drowned river. Yeah. Mm. Is it changing all the time? No, I don't know, yeah, not so much changing mm -hmm, all the time, mm -hmm. um, but the, the ship channel, for example, for us to get be an international seaport, the, the channel's changing all the time because there are tons and tons of sediment that come into the system that have to be removed so that the ships can continue to be come, in, come and go in and out of our harbor. And not get grounded. So, so yeah, so that's a, so that's you know that's a dynamic that that's going on all the time. So let's get back to Discovery Day because it's so much fun, and I want to make sure that people know about it. That there'll be things outside, outside, inside, inside. Our laboratory doors are open. I, I like that, you know, because you don't normally get a chance to do that. Right, right. Well, because we're doing a lot of you know a lot of our research efforts and stuff um, go on inside those mm -hmm. buildings. And, and they have to be kind of restricted because some, you know, you don't want to disturb an experiment that's going on. And that's why we open these up. And because people want to know what we're doing. Um, we represent the state of Alabama in the field of marine science. 
Um, and so people want to know, what's, what are you doing about the BP oil spill? What kind of studies are right. you doing as a follow-up to that? And some of our researchers are doing They're that. They're still doing and, that. And absolutely. And um, so that, that's important to relay that information to the general public so they know that. What can the kids do um, outside? Well, you know, we have, uh, we have an exhibit outside uh, called the Miss May May, and it's, it's a replica of a uh, shrimp boat. Oh. And, and they climb, the kids climb all over that. But interesting, behind the Miss May May is a shrimp trawl. Oh, okay. And the whole concept is for them to understand how a net works. So they can crawl in the net, on the net, around the net, but at the end of the net is a turtle excluder device. Oh. And it's a trap door in which sea turtles escape out of a net. Right. And we have a trap door in our net so the kids can escape claw. that way. And we have a turtle. We now have a, a, a new turtle exhibit in that area. And it's, it's a concrete turtle, but it's a loggerhead turtle. Uh -huh. And kids can climb, climb on, on it. Climb on that every, too. Yeah, they climb on it. They can see it. They can. So it's, it's part of the learning process, part of the learning um, experience that they have there. Are there, are there any, or is there anything that they can actually pick up or touch? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Are they alive? Uh, anything alive? No, nothing, nothing's, oh. nothing's, well, other than the hey, ray, bring me anything other than alive. the ray, the ray tank that yeah. has two bonnet head sharks and nine right. um, cow nose rays, they can actually touch those animals. They put their hand in the water and touch those animals as they swim by. Uh, but on exhibit throughout the rest of the estuarium are, examples of the life that it lives in a bay they've all been uh preserved right. and and they can pick we, as a matter of fact where some museums say do not touch only look oh. ours encourages sure. everybody to pick up and touch hold it look at it see some things like a sea cucumber which is an animal that you'd never know where its head is so oh. we challenge them which you know where's its head on where is their head do you have to pick it up and look at it nancy does it move or it stays no, the same. no, no. This one is preserved, so it doesn't move. Wow. Well, no. when I was alive, did it move? Uh, oh yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, it moves all over the bottom. It's, wow. So. But the head, it always stays in the same place. Yes. It Why does. is it so hard to find? Well, because it looks like like a the, cucumber. Yeah, it does. Does it, it really? Does. It does. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's pretty. It's pretty neat. The, and, and most and there's of the, lots of animals like and most cryptic. Of the kids are okay. Cri oh, oh, cryptic. Kids, animal. Okay. Kids are always okay. Yeah. They, they. They can pick stuff up and. Uh, they love it. They love touch it. it. As last time I was here, I brought the octopus, which yes, you, you did. <laughs> did you actually touch? It was great. And so we have, you know, we have the octopus on display, and their mouth is kind of hidden. You have to actually open up all the arms and look up underneath to find the mouth. And the, and inside that mouth is a very hard beak, and that's one of the challenges we do to the adults and to the children that come. And says, all right, here's the octopus, very fleshy, soft, and everything. Uh -huh. Where's its mouth? And so they they look all around for it and everything. So, so if, when I show up for Discovery Day, I've picked up that octopus. I would know where the mouth is, maybe. Absolutely, you would. Absolutely, you'd remember I would, that. I would hope so. You would remember that. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, of course, one, uh, we've talked about this before. There's also a wonderful gift shop. I take it that will be open. Absolutely, that will be open. That's a mainstay of our, our facility, and it has wonderful items in it there. It does. It really does. Yeah. I was using something that I bought last night, or that I bought, couple of years ago and it just wonderful it's just a fun place it's a great place for gifts and it helps y'all stay open yeah so yep. gosh it's, it's, what a it's day a, it's a great it's a great day yeah in alabama power they're they're coming down and they're bringing two electric vehicles down oh they are they, they're bringing them down there and they'll have them on display um for for the public to see mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the most modern electric vehicles made so that that's another you know display of energy that that we're going to have uh shown so it's it's all it covers all aspects with this you really probably don't have a lot of extra things you have to do because you do this normally every day right every, every day we the c lab during the academic year has close to twelve thousand children in grades k through 12 from all over the region mm -hmm. that come to the lab some for day events uh just for a day experience but many of them come and stay up to five days. We have dormitories that house 160 people. We have a cafeteria that feeds 160 people. So we have groups that come from Tennessee and Kentucky and Birmingham and Georgia and Mississippi, and they'll stay in our dorms, and they'll stay for five, for five days. And, and we teach them 
continued programs. Actually, we teach in a classroom and then apply that right out in the field. That is so cool. We have to take one more break. Absolutely. All right, sit tight. We'll see you in just a minute. I transferred to Biger High School halfway through my sophomore year, and the curriculum there, the instructors, teachers, uh, the whole thing was just a shock to me. Uh, at Viger, um, you were encouraged to critically think, and so uh, I was just uh, well grounded to move on into college football and then on into the NFL. Well, for me, Viger High School was the start. It's where I started, and I'm very proud of that. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Well, hello again. We're so glad you came back with us for Homeroom. We're talking to Dr. John Dindo. He is with the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. Big day coming up, Dece uh, April, I almost said December. April 12th, it's Discovery Day. It happens every year. A lot of people go more than once. You go one year, you love it so much, you go again. So try to remember to April 12th from 10 until 2. So Dr. John Dindo, I just looked over and I saw the most beautiful sculpture yeah, that's our. That's one of our um, newest exhibits. Uh -huh. It's outside in the parking lot at the entry to the uh, to the estuarium, and uh, it was uh, commissioned by the Dolphin Island Sea Lab Foundation, and it was created by Mr. Frank Ledbetter, and it's a beautiful piece of art that that uh, resemble what basically it's the cow nose rays that are in the tank. So it highlights the cow nose rays that we have on exhibit, and uh, it's really a neat. It, it's very it very neat piece it, of work. It really is. Wow. And then oh. inside the building, uh -huh. uh, we have another piece of art that we commissioned and, and it was completed and unveiled last Friday. And that is a great blue heron. Uh, oh. and it, it's full, full statue stand. That was wow. done by the artist Casey Downing. Mm -hmm. And that's inside the building and it's, it's just gorgeous work. Both, both artists were just the wonderful, wonderful uh, work that they've that's done. That's such fun. New things. New things. New things. And, we, I think we've hit Discovery Day pretty well, but remember, it's April 12th from 10 until 2. 10 until okay. 2. Now, let's talk about, you talked about the number of kids that go through uh, the sea lab during the, week, during mm -hmm. the uh, school year. Mm -hmm. But in the summer, you have really cool things, Oh, too. absolutely, yeah. We're a year-round mm -hmm. year operation, besides the graduate students and the research that are going right. on. In the summer, there are summer camps for middle school kids where they get to leave their parents for a week. And they, and come, they get to they, stay there They the get dorms. to stay in the dorms <gasps> with us for a week and uh, it's middle school uh -huh. and they get immersed into the oceans, literally. They go into marshes, they go out on our research boats. Um, it's, it's academic, but it's not academic in which they are required to memorize or learn anything like that. The high school program is an, is an academic program because uh, a high school student can receive one full year's advanced biology credit if they successfully pass. Wow, that's great. There's 174 contact hours in that class. So they're with us for a whole month. Uh -huh. And these kids come from all over the nation. How do um, they find out about you? Uh, well, on our website, they www.disl. But who would can, think about that? They can find out all of that. I, you know, uh, Students are curious. I mean, That's they're true. always searching. Sure. They're always searching, and especially if some are searching for something to do in the summer. Right. I mean, they'll, they'll find they'll find us that way. And a lot of our programs are word of mouth. Uh -huh. I mean, sure. You know, when we teach that many kids a year, they go back to their neighborhoods. They talk about mm -hmm. what they did. And they know about our programs in the summer and they tell their friends and cousins and relatives. And, who might and not live here, who might live correct. in Kentucky or and, something. And we've been at this location doing this for 40 
three years. Really? So, so we're, we're a well-established uh, research and education facility. So the high schoolers, do they take different is it different, are there different programs or do, do all of the students take the same thing? All the high school, there's 30 high school students that are admitted into the program mm -hmm. and most of the time we'll have 90 applicants in which we can only take 30. How do you choose? And well that's very hard, I mean it's, and it's not all just academics. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the key aspects in choosing a child is a letter of recommendation from the teacher because the teacher knows these students better, better than, than anybody. anybody sure. As all of us know, testing doesn't always uh, portray the child mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the top, and mm -hmm. so, but the teacher knows, mm -hmm. and, and that's what weighs heavy, heavy with us. Um, but they all take the same classes at the same time, and they're learning oceanography, they're learning marine biology, physiology, chemistry, and they're, all, and they're responsible for this. We're not creating marine scientists, but we're, these are students that think they may want to go on into the sciences, mm -hmm. and that's the big thing for us is the sciences, not necessarily marine science, and that's why we teach all aspects of the sciences, and you know, geography and geology and all of those kind of things. In there. You also have workshops for teachers. Is, does that, is that still going on? Yes, we have, we have summer workshops for teachers. Um, there's, a, there's a really cool one in which it's a technology workshop mm -hmm. in which the teachers get to learn how to build a remote operated vehicle and they get to operate it underwater in the swimming pool Whoa. because they drive it from uh -huh. the surface sure. and, they, and so they build these things and they operate it and they go home with it and they can use it in their classroom. They can demonstrate to, to students and these things have miniature cameras and all kinds of aspects that that, that bringing technology back to the classroom. And once is, again, you have students that come from all, or teachers that come from? Teachers come, almost all of our teachers come from the state of Alabama, mm -hmm. from, from all the counties mm -hmm. in, in the state. Now, do they spend good. the night too? Absolutely. Yeah, I they, guess especially yeah, if yeah, you were not from this Absolutely. Yeah, they area. Spend, they spend the night there as well. So we, in the summer, we'll have over 200 people a mm -hmm. day on, on campus, mm -hmm. you know, besides our normal uh, people that are working. We have 122 employees there. So besides them, we'll have 200 students of some aspect, middle school, high school, college. So it's uh, jumping. It's it is. Jumping. It it's is a, alive. It's a, it's a great place. You know? Now, um, we are almost out of time. I believe I heard when I was at a meeting at the Environmental Center, are you going to be there for their open house? Yeah, we're always, yeah, we we exchange back and forth. That is you know, so cool. And, and, well, we've worked with um, the past director Lloyd mm -hmm. Scott for 20 plus years, you know, when, when they first formed the Environmental Study Center. So yes, we we bring our people to their open house. They come to, to our open house and as, as we should because right. we have like things that, mm -hmm. we, that we want to uh, show the public and students. So are you excited about Discovery Day? Oh, absolutely. It's, excited I'm excited about, about every day. I know and you, you know, are. Discovery you Day. Are. That's why I like to have you But here. Discovery Day is a great day. It's great because I like to see the public going into the laboratories and talking to the mm -hmm. and kids asking uh, a graduate student, you know, why, why, why are you doing a study on that? Or, Gosh. you know, what does this mean? And so, and it helps to stimulate knowledge, transfer of knowledge and, and hopefully uh, help make some young scientists in the future. And think about the questions on the way home. We are out of time. So good to have you here, John. It's great, that, always, great to be always. with you. Always. And have fun at Discovery Day. Absolutely. I'm going to do my best to be there. Okay. Thank All you. Right. And thank you for watching and listening.